morning and welcome to my bi-monthly press briefing, where I usually take the opportunity to make a few announcements and to answer any pressing questions you might have. This morning, I'm happy to make three announcements, all of them in a unique way, aimed at strengthening the tourism sector, contributing to the enjoyment of our environment by the people of this territory, and by extension, strengthening the overall economy. These initiatives are the Prospect Reef Development Project, the Caribbean Development Project, and a project very dear to me, the Queen Elizabeth Park II Park Project. Let me start with the Queen Elizabeth II Park, a project I'm excited about. We wanted to have a press briefing there this morning, but for logis logistical reasons, I decided to have it here at my office. But I'll nevertheless give you a flavor of what is planned for the park. The works include the restoration and expansion of the park. Once completed, it is expected to be an attractive seaside amenity to enjoy by all the people of this territory. The park will also be a safe play area for children, give us much needed green open space, and contribute to our health and well-being. This new park will include pathways and hard landscaping, car park, boardwalk, a lookout point, picnic area, children's playground, central lawn at island, water features, shaded structures, and seating. Additionally, the design improvements to the park will provide much needed public amenities in the Rotang area that will be in keeping with government's desire to improve Rotang's image. The project is in line with the government of the Virgin Islands vision to improve the quality of life of all residents in this territory. It is also an important enhancement to the tourism product. We have already started to procure goods for the site in order to begin work on this project. I will now turn my attention to the Caribbean Development Bank Road Infrastructure Rehabilitation Development Project. I firmly believe that having a strong road network is critically important to the territory. As you know, when my government got into office, we were able to finalize access to a loan of $15.6 million from the Caribbean Development Bank, which the previous government had negotiated to upgrade and reconstruct the damaged roads ravage and drainage system by Tropical Storm Otto in October 2010. In July of this year, through the Ministry of Finance, we invited tenders for the implementation of the road and bridge rehabilitation works in Pleasant Valley to upgrade and improve drainage in the area. Then in early October, we invited tenders for the implementation of the road and slope restoration works including drainage diversions at Ballis Bay. I'm pleased to say that bids are in today for two of these projects, together valued at just over $1.2 million, so that work will start on those projects in short order. I'm looking forward to that start. <clears throat> I'd also like to comment at this time on the process of using monies from the Caribbean Development Bank. The regulations guiding the bank indicate that the proceeds of finance in the ordinary operations of the bank shall normally be used only for procurement in territories of members. This means that the procurement of goods will be coming from the Caribbean, Europe, and Latin America. The charter also requires that the bank ensures that the proceeds of any loan grant made, generated or participated in by the bank, are used only for the purpose for which the financing was granted and with due regard to considerations of economy and efficiency. I believe that a quality road infrastructure is critically important to strengthen our tourism product. Furthermore, by addressing the challenges with the road, we are ensuring the safety of all pedestrians and motorists traversing the area. I turn, now turn my attention to the Prospect Reef Development Project. When my administration served from 2003 to 2007, on February 2011-2005, we concluded the agreement to purchase a resort from the Cripps family for the purposes of establishing a world-class hospitality training center and a full-service business hotel. This purchase signified a deep commitment to empowering the people of this territory. For example, it was an avenue to prepare leaders in the hospitality industry 
to take up positions of authority and responsibility at all levels. Back then, the decision to purchase Prospect Reef and transform it into a world-class hospitality training center was not a small idea. In fact, it was a significant undertaking based on a larger vision for the future of our tourism industry. But after we left office, this project was given no priority and nothing materialized from this opportunity. But here we are once again, set to transform this resort into a world-class four or five five-star hotel facility to improve our tourism offering. And we are ready to begin moving forward with this important project. On April 5, 2013, my government sent out a tender notice inviting suitably qualified long-term firms to express interest in developing the site. Based on the presentations made, the decision was made to further pursue two of the proposals. Naturally, they were asked to produce detailed proposals that could be evaluated through a formal process of evaluation, negotiation, and selection. In the end, on October 24th, developer McAlpine was successful in securing the opportunity to transform the property to a world-class luxury resort. McAlpine intends to develop the property over a period of three years. Development includes the construction of villas, hotel suites, recreational facilities, conference facilities, branded condominiums, office space, restaurants, for example, on the property. McAlpenek intends to expend up to $100 million in carrying out the development. The government is pleased that the selection was made, and I'd be more pleased to say that we are now in the process of finalizing the project development agreement. I'm a firm believer that government cannot do it alone, and that is why I welcome this investment opportunity which is expected to add quality jobs to workforce, create opportunities for Virgin Islanders to participate in the project development and operations, and contribute to the territory's long-term economic growth. As I take my seat to prepare for our discourse, I want to encourage you to look out for our e-magazine titled Your Government at Work, a magazine graphically setting out government's accomplishments from November 11, 2011, the date of the first day my government walked through the doors to November 2013. It will be decimated this Wednesday, and I encourage all persons to get online and read it to get a clear sense of my government's accomplishments and ongoing commitment to building a better Virgin Islands. <laughs>